Hello everyone, welcome back to the reading of Don Casmurro by Machado de Assis here in the channels Tapa Olho Azul and Super Acadêmico. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels. Let's go! It is time. But it's time to go back to that afternoon in November, a bright cool afternoon tranquil as our house and the stretch of a road on which we lived. Actually, it was the beginning of my life. All that I had gone before was like the making up and putting on custom of those about to go on stage. Like the turn up of the lights, the turning of the fiddles, the overture. Now I was to commence my opera. Life is an opera. That's what an old Italian tenor who lived and died here used to tell me. And one day he explained his definition in such a way that he made me believe it. Perhaps it is worth the trouble to give it. It is only one chapter. 9. The Opera He no longer had any voice but he persisted in saying he had. Lack of practice is my trouble, he would add. Every time a new company arrived from upper Europe, he would go to the empresario and recount all the injustice of heaven and earth. The empresario would commit one more and the old tenor would go away exclaiming against his unfairness. He still wore the mustachios of his rose. When he walked his spit of his age, he looked as if he were paying court to a princess of Babylon. At times, without opening his mouth, he would trill over some fragment older than he, or as old. Voices muffled like that always hold possibilities. He came here to dine with me a number of times. One night, after a good deal of Chianti, he repeated his customary definition, and when I said that life was no more an opera than a voyage at sea or a battle, he shook his head and replied, Life is an opera and a grand opera, the tenor and the baronet, baritone <laughs> fight for the soprano in the presence of the basso and the second voices, when it's not the soprano and the contralto who are fighting for the tenor in the presence of the same basso and the same seconds. There are number, numerous chorus many ballads, and the orchestration is excellent. But my dear Morcolini, why not? And after taking a long drink of wine, he set down the glass and revealed to me the story of a creation, in the felony words, which I will condense a little. God is a poet, the music is by Satan. A young maestro with a great future who studied in the Conservatory of Heaven. Rival of Michael, Raphael and Gabriel, he would not endure to the priority those classmates enjoyed in distribution of the prizes. It may be true that their overly sweet and mystic music was boring to his genius, which was essential, essentially tragic. He started a rebellion, which was discovered in time, and he was expelled from the conservatory. The whole thing would have, would have ended there if God had not written a libretto for the opera and throw it aside because he considered that type of amusement unsuited to his eternity. 
Satan carried off the manuscript with him to hell, with the idea of showing that he was a better musician than the others, and perhaps to effect a reconciliation with heaven, he composed the score. As soon as finished it, he took it to the eternal father. Lord, he said to him, I have not forgotten that I learned up here. Take this score, hear it, amend it, have it performed, and if thou find it worthy of the heavenly heights, admit me and it at thy feet. No, reported the Lord, I will hear nothing. But Lord, nothing, nothing. Satan went to supplicating with no better luck until God, weird and full of pity, consented to have the opera performed. But outside the precincts of heaven, he designed a special theater, this planet, and created a whole company with all the parts, first and second chorus and ballet dancers. Here are some of the re rehearsals. No, I'll have nothing to do with the reversals. It's enough to have composed the libretto. I'm quite willing to split with the, the author's royalties. That refusal was probably a mistake. From it resulted certain incongruities, incongruities which a hearing would have detected and a friendly collaboration prevented. Indeed, in some places the words go to the right and the music to the left. And there are those who say that this is the beauty of the composition and keeps it from being monotonous. And in this way they explain the trio of Eden, the aria of Abel, the chorus of the guillotine, and the slavery. Not infrequently, the same plot situation is used over again without sufficient reason. Certain motifs, motifs grow wearisome from repetition. There are obscure pas passages, the ma maestro makes too much use of the choral masses, which often drown out the words with their confused harmony. The, or the orchestral parts, however, are handled with great skill. At least, this is the opinion of the unprejudiced. The friends of the maestro would have, in, would have it that a better score would be hard to find. Occasionally, one of them will admit that there are rough, rough spots, certain gaps here and there. But with the continued run of the opera, no doubt this will be filled in and smoothed over. Since the maestro does not refuse to amend his work where he finds it, at the variance with the sublime thought of the poets, the friends of the latter take a different view. They claim that the libretto has been sacrificed that his score corrupts the sense of the words and that although it may be fine in some passages and contrived with art in others, it is absolutely unrelated and even contrary to the spirit of the drama. The ridiculous, for example, does not exist in the text of the poet. It is an excrescence, excrescence an imitation of the Merry Wives of Windsor. This point is consisted by the Satanists with some appearance of reason. They say that at the time young Satan composed his grand opera, neither this farce nor Shakespeare had been born. They go so far as to affirm that the English poets did nothing more than copy down the book with such art and felicity that he seems himself to be author of the work. 
but manifestly he is a plagiarist. This piece, concluded the old tenor, will last as long as the theater lasts, and there is no telling when it will be demolished as an act of astronomic expedience. The success of the produ production is increasing. Poet and musician receive their royalties with punctual regularity, <laughs> but not in the same coin. The law of division is that of the scriptures, many are called, few are chosen. God gets paid in gold, Satan in paper. Very witty. Witty? He shouted. Then he calmed himself. My dear Santiago, I am not witty. I have a horror of wit. What I say is the truth, pure and ultimate. One day, when all the books have been burned as useless, there will be someone, maybe a tenor, most likely an Italian, who will teach this truth to men. All is music, my friend. In the beginning was the do, and the do became re, etc. This wine glass, he was feeling it again, this wine glass is a brief refrain. You don't hear it, neither do you hear wood or stone, but they are all part of the same opera. Thanks for listening and catch us more in this playlist. Goodbye.